Hey, how's it going? It's Peter from the film scoring department at Berklee College of Music. I'm going to program a rock beat today in Reason. Actually, uh, three different versions of the pattern. You don't have to know how to read music to get this to work. But I have uh, the examples here of the drum beats that I want to program. I'm just going to launch Reason right away. I'm using Reason version 8.3.1. Uh, this is a default setup that comes when I open up Reason. So let me save what I have first. I'm going to save this on my desktop. I'm going to name this Drum Beats. And I'm going to clean up the default setup a little bit here because I don't need all of this to program a drum beat. Let me tuck my sequencer out of the way for now, and I'm going to select some of the devices that are here by default in the rack. Select this delay, and I'm going to Command Delete to remove it. If I just hit Delete on the keyboard to remove a device, like I've just selected the Echo device, and if I just hit Delete without hitting Command, it asks me if I'm sure. So either way is fine. It's possible to shift click to get a couple of devices or a number of devices. I'll command delete to remove what I don't want. And these are all just default items that you need here, the master section and the hardware interface. But you can click on the little triangle to make them smaller and out of the way. This simplifies the view quite a bit. Over here in my browser, I'm going to find the re-drum computer and use this to program this drum beat. And I can just drag this right into the blank space of the rack. And it's ready to go. This is a, a kind of a vintage drum machine style interface like the old 808. Uh, you don't have to play things on a keyboard or anything necessarily to get a pattern going in here. It can just run a pattern built by selecting buttons. Each of these vertical regions at the top represent a single drum sound. There's 10 of them. Uh, if you click on the little play button near the top, it actually triggers the drum sound so you can audition what you're hearing. That's just a default drum set that came up when I loaded the device. If I want a different drum set, I can select one from the browser and drag it onto the device. Now I have a different set of sounds. And also I could use these arrows, up and down arrows here, to move through the list of devices available over here in the browser. It's just so long as this this area is in orange, it means it's active and I, that I can use these arrows to go to the next one. I'm going to go back to the sound that originally loaded this disco kit. There's only four sounds I really need. Um, to make this program. If I look back over here at this drum pattern that I have figured out, this line of X's at the top is a closed hi-hat sound, the eighth notes, and these two notes below that line are a snare drum sound, and the, the notes here down at the bottom are a kick drum or a bass drum sound. This second pattern uses the same set of drum instruments. And this last one actually, this one's intended to have a ride cymbal along the top on those quarter notes. And those sounds are all available in this uh, disco kit. There's the kick. There's the snare. 
hi-hat is up here. And there is a ride sound here, ride cymbal. So I have all those sounds available. I have the pattern mode enabled lit up here. I can adjust my volume here. And I can select any of these drums at the bottom here with the select button, but I'm going to keep the kick drum sound selected. Now if I go back to this first pattern, you can see that the smallest subdivision of the beat that I have is eighth notes in there. And that can help me set up this redrum device in Reason. I can actually change this knob to be set to one eighth, eighth note as the smallest subdivision. And looking at this chart, the number of eighth notes long that the pattern is, is eight eighth notes long. It's just one measure of eighth notes, so it's eight eighth notes long. So for the number of steps in the pattern, I can actually reduce this number by clicking on the down arrow until it says eight. And if I, if I hit the run button, the lights of the pattern sequencer run along the top and you can see it's just running through, it's stepping through the first eight buttons here and then returning back to the first one. Looking again at my chart, I can see that this kick drum is on beat one and then on beat three again and that's it. Uh, another way to think of that is that it's on the first eighth note and the fifth eighth note. Eighth note. And if I look in reason, with that kick drum selected here, I can click on button one and button five and hit the run button. Now I have those kick beats where they belong. All right, looking back at my chart, I have a snare drum here on beat two, and then again on beat four. And another way to think of that is that it's on the third eighth note and the seventh eighth, eighth note. So if I select the snare drum sound with that button there, click on the 3 and the 7. Now I've programmed in the snare drum hits to be on the right button. And when I hit run, it's going to continue to run the kick drums, which we see. We select, hit the select button. We see the kick drums are still on 1 and 5, the 1st and 5th, 8th note. And we select the snare. We see that these are where we added them. When we hit run, we'll hear all of it together. And you can see the red indicator button cycling along through the eighth notes. All right. Back to the chart. You can see that the eighth note pattern on the hi-hat is every single eighth note, one through eight. So let's select the hi-hat drum, the button and turn on all of these. And we'll hit run. I programmed all of that while this number one pattern button was the selected one. A1 is the pattern that we just programmed. If I select 2, so now we're looking at A2, there's nothing in here. This one we haven't programmed anything. I can hit run and we hear nothing. So that's a place where I can put another pattern. Now if we look at the chart, you can start to see that there's a, a, a finer subdivision of beats in here. We have a, a few sixteenth notes down here in the kick drum, there's a 16th note. 
And over here in the snare drum, there's a couple of 16th notes. So when we go into Reason and program our pattern now, we want to keep this one on the resolution of 1 16th note resolution, where it sort of defaulted to. And the length of this pattern is going to be 16 steps, the way that it defaulted to. If we look at the chart again, it's a full measure of what would be 16th notes. So that's 16 steps. 16th notes in 4-4, four, four, there's 16 of them. The kick drum pattern is similar. Beat 1 and 3 are strong beats, but there is this 16th note before the 3 beat. And so one way to think of this is that there's a kick drum on the first 16th note, and the 8th 16th note, and the 9th 16th note. First, oops, make sure the kick drum is selected. First, 8th, 9th. If we run it, we should hear the kick drum pattern. The pattern has a snare drum on beat 2 and beat 4, then in the last two 16th notes of the pattern. So another way to think of that is that there's a snare drum on the 5th 16th note, then there's a snare drum on the 13th 16th note, and then there's snare drums on the 15th and 16th. 5th, 13th, 15th, 16th. Select the snare drum. 5th, 13th, 15th, 16th. And we should be able to hit run and hear all of it together along with the kick. Lastly, we have a hi-hat pattern here on eighth notes up until the fourth beat. Another way to think of that is that they are on the first sixteenth note, the third sixteenth note, the fifth sixteenth note, the seventh sixteenth note, the ninth sixteenth note, the eleventh sixteenth note, and the thirteenth sixteenth note. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. I'm going to select the hi-hat. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. And if I hit the run button, Using the Pattern Select button, I should be able to run the main pattern, the number one pattern, for three bars, then run the number two pattern for one bar as a fill, and then return back to the number one pattern. One last thing you'll notice as I did that is that when the run button's going and the pattern's playing, and you select another pattern, the computer waits till the end of the measure that's currently playing before it switches. I'll demonstrate.
The last pattern I have is built out of quarter notes as the smallest subdivision. So I'll select pattern 3. That's an empty pattern. When I hit run, nothing happens for sound. Change the resolution to quarter notes. And I can change the length of the pattern to 4. It's 4 quarter notes long. The chart has kick drums on 1 and 3 beats. So another way to think of that is the first quarter note and the third quarter note. Select the kick drum, first quarter note, third quarter note, and I'll run it. The pattern has a snare drum on the second and fourth beats. That's the same as the second and the fourth quarter notes. Select the snare drum here. Click the two and the four buttons. We can listen to the kick and the snare together. The pattern has a ride symbol on all four quarter notes. Back here. Select the ride symbol here and turn on the button for all four of these. When I run, all of it will play together. Here's the first pattern. Here's the second one. And here's the last one. Look for a link in the description to another video which shows how to combine these patterns in the sequencer.